Hi, folks. Welcome back to Money and Politics. We're coming to you on May the 8th, uh, Saturday, and I wanted to uh, just touch base. We are coming to you the day after we heard uh, Brian Foote give his last investor call, and it's been quite a, um, quite a, a lot of uh, people giving me their uh, views online, which I like, and if you haven't already, feel free to give me your uh, thoughts. And by the way, if you haven't followed me on Twitter, go ahead and do that. And if you want to send me a private note, uh, you can reach me at moneyandpoliticsnow at gmail. Um, but I am going to be uh, welcoming back my son, Thomas. Last, last time Thomas and I talked, we got a lot of response from you, the viewers. And so I asked Tom to come back and just share his thoughts in general on on the company and where we've kind of been uh, over the last spring. So, Tom, here we are, May the 8th. Give us your overview of the company from your perspective. Well, the last time we spoke, it was about a month ago. What a wild month it has been for Humble over the past three weeks, three and a half weeks. I remember when I was last talking to you, uh, I was talking about why the stock price had been drifting down from $4 down to $3. And I was saying that, hey, you know, if it goes down to $3 or below $3, that's great for me because I get to buy shares at a cheaper price. And then the stock fell off a cliff to $1.10. So what was that like? Was I cheerling around? Was I throwing a party? No, I was buying shares, though. I think the lowest I got was at $1.24. That was an unfortunate time. It's not a time to be celebrated. I think what happened there with the Seeking Alpha article and the issue over the Class B shares, it hurt the company in the short term with not only the, the, the price drop, but I wanted the company to come out and have a stronger response. Uh, yesterday, with the conference call, we heard what we needed to hear regarding those shares. Uh, not only is, as we were told before, Brian Foote is not going to be selling any of his preferred B shares until 2023. But we also saw that for the, um, the, the, the directors, the officers of the company who have 16% of those shares, they have strict limitations on how many shares they can sell. And then with the final 38%, let's just say 40% owned by angel investors, friends and families, or friends and family members who were given stock, you know, they're going to have the opportunity to sell some of those shares in December. But the idea that was put out in the seeking art out, excuse me, Seeking Alpha article that we were going to get mass dilution in December, um, that was finally put to rest yesterday. I would have preferred that the company, Brian Foote, um, had come out weeks ago and shown that graph, that that quick conversation he had yesterday about the, the preferred B shares, that could have been done weeks ago. And that would have saved a lot of people uh, a lot of headaches. I wasn't particularly bothered. I thought the theory that the, the bears put out that come December, all the insiders are going to cut and run. They're going to flood the common shares with 5 billion, 6 billion outstanding shares. This is the stupidest thing I've heard. The people who have the opportunity to make the most money over the long term are going to sell everything in December. Not some. The theory wasn't that, well, there might be some delusion. The theory was we're going to be flooded with shares. I mean, this was so stupid. These shares, which could be worth billions and billions of dollars over the next five to 10 years, as soon as they get to December, everyone's going to cut and run. It was an idiotic theory, but it's hard for people to hold on to their heads and use common sense when you're seeing red everywhere. And the stock price has fallen off a cliff and you're looking at the amount of money you had made. It's just plummeting. It's in the red, it's in the red, it's in the red and you're losing investors. And everybody's going, everybody's getting scared and you're just in the middle of that storm and you just got to hold on. Ignore the noise. But it's easier, it would have been easier for people to ignore this. It's not me. 
the stock price falling didn't hurt me. I bought more. I wanted the company to come out and say something for some of those newer investors, you know, the people who were in your audience. Um, and they could have had their concerns uh, assuaged. And I, I think that would have been a much better approach. Um, I, I've been in this situation before where a Seeking Alpha article comes out and it crashes the stock. This happened to me last August or September in next deck. Alpha article comes out, stock goes down 25% on Monday. Whatever. I have a friend asking me, he's texting me, he goes, why is this down? I look into it, I'm seeking alpha article, who cares? By the way, that should be the general attitude people have towards seeking alpha article. If you take it with a grain of salt, I don't care if it's bullish, I don't care if it's bearish. It's really your attitude should be, mm, who cares? Well, Tuesday. you know, I, I've often said, and I just had an article the other day, or a video, I, I should say, the other day, talking about emotions, and you got to keep your emotions in check. And fear is a powerful emotion. And so a lot of people, when you get the stock that's down, uh, people start to get fearful, and then they run for the hills. And then if someone comes out with a Seeking Alpha article, it's like, oh, my God, you know, this guy must be an expert, and uh, he's making an argument, and people embrace the negativity and again overreact so there's so much going on and the other thing to put in context and to remember sometimes we forget what is right in front of us that humble is a startup company and because of that they have to lay the infrastructure and i think they're doing that and that's what part of what we heard in the investment call but just looking back they did the deal uh, merger in December. We were waiting for our own ticker. We got that in March. They hired or they uh, bought Tickery. They bought the company or had the deal with the company. Uh, I think it's Aurora, if I'm saying that right, in Chile. It's Aurora Group down uh, in Chile. Yeah. So they have that. In other words, they, they came out with the app. A lot of people don't like the app. I think it certainly needs to be improved and they are improving it. But my point is that when you have a new company, you're not buying something that's been around and established. You're not buying into Facebook. You're not buying into Coca-Cola. You're buying into something that people are growing. And we have to remind ourselves that the company is only five months old. So the point is when you get uh, someone like you know, the gold panda that writes an article on Seeking Alpha, it has this big splash uh, that causes all these emotional ripples to go out. Uh, and other companies that are already established are not going to be subject to that kind of a reaction because they are established. And people might say something about, well, I think Facebook is going south you know, and people, I think, take it more in stride that, than they do when you have a, a startup company. So a couple of points there. One, folks, be patient. Let them build the company. Uh, two, don't overreact when you get one guy from the peanut gallery, you know, uh, giving them the, uh, the thumbs and saying, you know, they suck because uh, you don't know. that It's just one guy's opinion. Well, the, the point I do want to finish, and this is the thing, in terms of in terms of companies growing, it's not just that Humble's growing financially and they're expanding their products. They're going to grow as a company and, and I hope approach these types of issues better. You know, finishing my story, I had I had my stock in next deck, it goes down 25% on Monday. On Tuesday, it goes down 36%. And I'm getting angry, not at the company, it just, you know, people were buying into these ridiculous art or ridiculous arguments and the stock was plummeting. And what happened was at the market close on Tuesday, the CEO came out. This is two days after the article came out. The CEO of Next Tech comes out. He does a video pretty much saying well, everything in that article is BS. Wednesday morning, a PR press release comes out saying that the CEO had bought 125,000 shares on Wednesday. At the end of the market, at the market close, the stock had gone up 75%. It not only obliterated the losses from the previous two days, it had gone up since Monday morning. And the point of that story is that's the type of response that Humble should have had. 
This wasn't, hey, we went down 10%. You know, Penn went down 11% the other day after their earnings call. Okay, you're going to go down. When you go down 60-something percent over two days, you can market to something exactly what it was. It's the issue of the preferred B shares. They should have come out sooner. It's better late than never, but they could have come out, you know, a couple of days after that article came out and, and put that issue to rest. So I, I do think going forward, um, their communication will get better. And, you know, like you said, people are going to get emotional. They're going to head for the hills. That's all true. Uh, at the same time, you know, it's also incumbent for, for the company to come back, excuse me, for the company uh, to approach an issue such as this. I'm glad they did. The B shares thing wasn't an issue for me, but I did feel sorry for some of the newer retail investors who got involved and, and hadn't been through this before. I've been through this before. I've been on the OTC. I've seen stocks crash over a period of days. This wasn't anything new for me. Um, but yes, I, I do. I do wish the company had come out sooner, really just because one to help out some of the newer investors, but also when, when you know, when we take a stock price crash like that, we're going to lose some of those long term investors. Um, and, and it just delays the process of getting the stock price to where you want it to be for an eventual uplisting. I don't believe uplisting is right around the corner. It's not. It probably won't even happen until later this year, if not early next year. But it does delay that process. And it's obviously in the company's best interest that this stock does uplist to NASDAQ sooner than later. And, and so with the stock price that is still down 50% from where it was a month ago, if not more, you know, this whole issue, uh, it hurt some of the people who have sold. Um, and, and, and it did delay, I think, it's going to delay some of the company's long-term goals in terms of uplisting. Uh, that said, you know, things are still good. We got exciting news yesterday about their, uh, about their acquisition uh, with Monster Creative. Uh, we got exciting information, which was really my main concern about the preferred B shares. Those are not going to be an issue, as I presumed. We're not going to get mass dilution. Um, we're making progress. Uh, on the app, I like that, you know, Brian Foote is explaining, hey, it's, it's, it's a, what is it? A, we've got the bones in place, but we're not quite there yet with everything, but it is coming. And so I'm looking forward to getting that one click ETX. I think the peer to peer is going to be huge. Like I said last time, it's not going to be huge necessarily in America. We have PayPal, we have Venmo, but for those developing countries, um, the ability to transfer money, Foote was talking about it yesterday, you know, they're really using cash. But they're going to start seeing their currency go more digital and, and Humble's going to be there. So I think peer to peer, excuse me, peer to peer is going to be huge uh, for them. And that should be coming out uh, in the second quarter, I believe. So we still have a lot to look forward to. And I, I'm, 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 I think there was a cloud over Humble because of this B shares issue. And so yesterday I was just very excited to kind of have that narrative. Uh, taken out behind a shed, a shed and shot and just completely obliterated um, that, that ridiculous theory that we were going to be flooded with five or six billion shares because some dope was published on Seeking Alpha, you know, a publication that if you have a pulse and you can write 500 words, you'll get published on Seeking Alpha. So, you know, <laughs> fart smeller 69 who wants to tell you about how Amazon is going to go broke in the next 30 minutes. Hey, fart smeller, that's great. We'll publish you in Seeking Alpha, you know. I mean, they'll put anything in there. It's as I said earlier, don't listen to people who work for, in my opinion, what can be used as a short and distort publication. Listen to the company. Yes, the company should have done better. They should have come out sooner, put this issue to rest. But there's going to be, but use this as a learning experience. And not just for Humble, but for other investors in Humble. Because if you're in the OTC, especially, they don't, they don't do this to Amazon. They don't do this to Facebook. Ain't nobody writing a Seeking Alpha article to tell you that Elon Musk isn't really a person. He's, he's a bunch of gerbils in a trench coat. They don't go after the big companies. They're going to go after the up-and-comers, they're going to go after the startups. 
So I've, I've dealt with this before in Next Tech. I dealt with it again in Humble. And, and for those new investors on your channel, this is going to happen again, hopefully not with Humble, but in your investing career, there's going to be other smear pieces that come out and, and you just got to deal with it. You know, I mean, that's that, just that, part no, that's, of being in the OTC. That's not only, yeah, as I said earlier, remember we're a startup and the other thing, we're a startup on the OTC. We are not on the NASDAQ and you're not going to get this. The thing is when you're on the OTC, you're, you're, your investors are retail investors and that's why they're more subject to an article like you get on the seeking alpha when you're on the nasdaq you're going to have experienced hands you're going to have people running money professionally you're going to have pension funds they're not going to give a rat's you know what about yeah an article on Seeking Alpha. They'll just brush it away, throw it away, but, you know, because it, it, it doesn't matter. They know it doesn't matter. But on the OTC, you're gonna have a lot of people who are starting to invest for the first time and they're nervous and they're subject to the scare story. It's like scaring children, you know, at Halloween. The adult isn't going to be frightened, but the kids are like, oh my God, you know, and it's a little bit like that where people overreact from an emotional standpoint. You know, we have, um, let me bring up the uh, ETX. Now this is a photograph folks, so don't go by the returns here. This is a static image and this is from, uh, a, I don't know, could have been a couple of weeks ago, but we got the ETXs and we got, that's another thing we got out. And we have, over the development of time here, we also have, uh, here's this, which is a kind of a timeline going. We, we see where we are, and the blue is done. Now, peer-to-peer -peer was supposed to be done in April. It wasn't, we're, but, you know, Humble has been moving forward. Tom, as you look forward here, and we've got some of the things, again, coming up, we, we did get the NFTs. They're going to look at credit cards that was talked about yesterday, and that might have been one of the things that's uh, been overlooked. But we're going to have uh, credit cards, personal loans, title insurance. Uh, and then in the uh, third quarter, the government uh, RFPs request for proposals, which would be another source of income, which we do not have as yet. Um, when you look at what's happened, when you look at what's going to be coming up, is there anything that you've had a chance to focus on that you're either already excited about or looking forward to? Something that was said not in yesterday's conference call, but was said in the, I believe the previous conference call, um, Brian Foote talking about Aurea Group. And, and once again, he was saying how great they were. But he was saying that he really thinks with their help, they're going to be able to open. Really excited about, you know, what's going to happen with the numbers we're going to see for peer to peer uh, in Latin America and these other developing countries. My interest with Humble right now isn't so much about what's going on in America. We're in the early stages there. I think we're getting the NFT marketplace coming out very soon. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see if, if this is the uh, uh, revolutionary product that really uh, enables a lot of these developing countries to start having easier access access to money, but transferring money. So um, Brian had talked about uh, other country rights, getting other country right deals signed yesterday. And uh, I'm, I'm interested to hear more about uh, what Ori is doing. And we'll hear more about uh, their work with them in Chile and hopefully uh, the rest of Latin America. So that's, that's one of the things I'm most excited about. I I'm not going to be making NFTs anytime soon. I, I don't know that I'll be going to any concerts anytime. Uh, soon. 
Um, I was and again, surprised in America, yesterday. with peer-to-peer, you have other options. But but yeah, what's going on in Latin America and, and, and other areas of the world, that's where a lot more of my interest is right now. That's what I'm excited about. I was surprised. Well, number one, I'm, I'm looking forward to what Tickery can do this year. Yes, as we yes. Come out of in terms COVID. of revenue, yeah, coming and, out of COVID. And that was concerts. nice to hear that they did a million dollars in revenue in a 30-day period. Uh, they're not doing that yet every month. Hopefully, they're going to be that doing that and much more on a regular basis. Uh, I'm interested. I, I thought it was uh, interesting on the NFT front that he was saying how I think it's Top Shot, if I have that right. Uh, yes, with the NBA. That they were doing $350 million a month in NFTs. Uh, <laughs> I would not have guessed that. Uh, this whole NFT thing is new to me, but I think it's new to most people. So now that Humble has the studio uh, deal that they just announced with Monster, that mm -hmm. who knows over the course of the next 12 months, you know, where you think, oh, where's the stock going to be this week? Let's think about where it's going to be in 12 months. Yeah. What yeah. can Monster do? And my goodness, wouldn't it be something, forget the $350 million a month, wouldn't it be something if Humble could be doing even $10 million a month in NFTs a year from now, plus Tickery, whatever they're doing, plus, uh, you know, the R... The ETX subscriptions. Uh, the, the subscriptions on the ETXs. So... Folks, to put this in context, and by the way, Tom, since you know, I said to Tom, we'll go about 10 minutes. We're already at 21 minutes. Again, this goes oh by. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Brian Foote said this yesterday. He goes, you know, I was on CNBC, and it's been so long since I've seen TV, and I was, on, I was doing the interview, and, uh, and, and wow, I forgot how, past fi how, how fast, fast five works. minutes yeah, can go. And I go, yeah, I know, Brian, because I speak for what I think is 10 minutes, and it's 20. I've been there. It's true. It just the time flies. By. Yeah, the time flies by. And his interview was only four minutes. We've been talking for yeah. 21, yeah. going on 22 yeah. now. But yeah. uh, let me just say this. There's there's so many reasons here, folks. I guess the thing that we would say in a nutshell is that uh, you don't you don't want to be scared out of your shares. You don't want to be um, panicking in the near term because what you're seeing in front of your eyes is a brand new company that is more or less uh, hitting their benchmarks of mm -hmm. what they said they would do. And they're going to be going through various uh, revisions like with the app, and they're going to be improving things as they go along. And we got to give them some time. That's not making an excuse, such as the natural progression. Um, Tom, let me say this before, uh, before I close out. Uh, do you have any last words you want to close out with? Yeah, just to say, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm still supporter of the company as I was a month ago. I'm, I'm glad that uh, the, the B share issue is behind us, um, and I think there's a lot more excitement to look forward to this year. We're still very much in the early stages, and when you and I are in either Nashville or San Diego at the end of the year, I hope at one of these investor parties, the company will still be in its early stages. This is a long-term investment. We're very young. We will be young in December. We will be in our infancy even going into next year. We're just starting out. That's still the case. Don't get shaken out of this company uh, just yet. Let's be here for the long term. We have a lot to look forward to. And as I have said many times, not that I've only invested in Cisco. I, I made money in other things. But when I bought Cisco, they were relatively new. And the growth that we had in Cisco over the, uh, and, and when, by the way, when I got in, it wasn't even the first year. The company was, uh, I don't know how old then, maybe 10 years old. But, um, but it was really starting to gain traction. And the growth uh, in value that you can get in those early years before the company matures is when you want to be in the company and where you can really make a fortune. And that's what I'm hoping to do. That's what Tom's hoping to do and what we hope for all of you. I'll close it out, Tom. Thanks again for your thoughts. And uh, folks, thanks for watching. You can always reach out to me online. And uh, in the meantime, we'll keep covering the story and we'll hope you'll keep watching and commenting. We'll see you later.